This one's from the Troll Patrol. It says, I want to know how he... Diogenes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know how he experiences emotional events considering his antisocial personality disorder. He mentioned answering it after Nabil's death, but I never saw any answer. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, I, I intend to because so many people were asking about that. And uh, I just, I mean, the number, of, the number of videos people want to see is very different from the videos I can make in a, you know, in a day or a week or something like that. So, right. um, but yeah, I can give you, I can give you, a, I'll give you a complete rundown of my emotional <laughs> history. Right. Um, so growing up, um, I could cry. But it was like, it was tears of rage. You know what I mean? Mm. I could cry, but it was because I was so angry. Like, right. uh, I want to kill everybody. And, and then I would be like, uh, you know, just tears running down my face mad. Right. Um, but it was never, I feel bad about something and, mm. and I'm crying over it. Right. Um, when I, after I became a Christian, I started, I, I would get like choked up if something really awesome happened, right? Like someone sure. comes to Christ, you know, my voice cracks while talking about it or something like this, getting choked up, but still right. um, not over anything bad happening, right? I'm just, Interesting. Yeah. yeah, so for people who don't know, so, uh, um, I've been diagnosed as with antisocial personality disorder, which uh, uh, it means you're a socio sociopath or a psychopath and you, you don't form normal emotional attachments to other people. So when other people die or something like that, you, you don't have any sort of internal reaction to it you don't feel bad over it so most people would feel bad if their parents died or something like this they feel bad about it yeah um i don't there's 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 just there's no reaction when it's when it when it happens um so that's how i grew up and then i you know became a christian and uh, still for years as a christian um my uh one of my dad's friends and called me and told me that that he died um, and I said, okay, you know, th thanks for calling. Thanks. Thanks. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll come down. I'll take care of it and stuff. And, uh, hung up the phone and fell back asleep. Right. Oh, and, yeah. and so there, just, there was just no reaction or, and then people are calling and it's awful because people call me afterwards and try to comfort me. Right. I, right. I'm thinking, are you dumb? Are you, are you, are you really dumb? I, I understand. <laughs> I understand you're trying to be a good friend here, but right, right. why are you trying to comfort a, a guy, a, a sociopath? Well, it makes no sense, right? Even for me, I remember thinking after, I, I actually contemplated in my head. I was like, do I tell him like, after Nabil passed, I was like, do I tell him like, I mean, how do I do, handle this? You know, I was like, well, maybe I'll just say like, sorry to hear, you know what I mean? Even though it's like, your yeah, that's fine. It's, it's more along yeah. the lines of when, when people are trying to comfort. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guys. <laughs> Yeah. Don't ever bother trying to comfort a sociopath. <laughs> Whatever you think that sociopath is going through, they are not going through what you think they're going through. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, that, that went on for a while. But uh, that, that the first kind of change was um, we had our, our third son was, was born. He's born with, uh, we didn't know it at the time because it took a couple months to get a diagnosis. Um, but he was born with a disease called myotubular myopathy. And when you're born, you're born with what's called floppy baby syndrome. Just your, the baby's just floppy. He's not moving. Um, right. He's not crying. Um, they're shaking him. He's not breathing. He's got a heart rate, but that's it. Now, when the doctors see that, they know something's wrong, but they don't know what's wrong yet, right? It could be a neurological problem. Your brain mm -hmm. isn't sending signals. It could be um, it, it could be in your brain. It could be anywhere in your nerves, or it can be actually in the muscles or something like that. Yeah. So they don't know. There are tons of things that can cause that, and so they don't know at that point. All they all you know is your baby's not moving. Right. Um, so we had no idea, and we. Uh, I don't remember if it was on the first day or the second day or whatever, but uh, I was in the, the hospital room with my wife mm -hmm. and we, uh, we, we prayed for our baby. And mm -hmm. while I, I hadn't had any reaction before that, I was totally calm. Um, but when uh, we were praying, uh, I got a little choked up, like my voice mm -hmm. cracked, but I wasn't crying or anything like that. It was just my, my voice cracked a little, yeah. um, but it was, it was from a bad feeling, right? It was right, from yeah, a, yeah. Ugh, I can't, you know, this is awful, right? Right. Um, which, as far as I remember, that's the first time in my life was I ever had any sort of emotional reaction to something bad happening to to someone. Yeah. Like where I was like, oh, this this hurts. Right. 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 Um, so that was kind of the first time. And it was while praying. Um, the second time was several years later and it involved uh, our fourth son who had the same disorder. Half of half of boys that you have, uh, if you're a carrier of the disease, will get it. So right. uh, we have four sons. Two of them have it. Two of them don't. So our fourth son also had it. And there was uh, a time when um, my, uh, sometimes we, they, they breathe through a ventilator. 
And we took, uh, we sometimes take them off the ventilator just so they can breathe on their own a little bit. They get a little practice breathing on their own. They can do it for a while. Sometimes it's 10 minutes and then their oxygen will start dropping. So you hook them back up. Sometimes they'll go for hours breathing on their own and they're fine. Okay. So we just let them breathe on their own. They get some practice with right. their muscles. Their muscles are weaker, but their muscles still work. They're just weak. So it's good to give them some practice and so on. So sometimes we'll disconnect them and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, let them breathe on their own for a while. And m my wife disconnected Paley. And, uh, and I, I said, I said, because she's more confident than I am. She'll, she'll, she'll focus on hearing the alarms and so on. I don't want to leave the room right, right, unless right. I just run and grab something. I don't want to leave the room if, he, right. if he's hooked up to something. Right. But, but she's fine. They're, they're hooked up to alarms, right? If, right. if his oxygen starts, starts dropping, an yeah. alarm goes off. Right. And you hear it in the next room. And so you can, you can go and get it. Yeah. Um, but I was like, hey, you know, stay close to him if he's, if he's, if he's off, the, if he's off his, his vent. Yeah. And then we're just sitting, we're just sitting there. And we're, we're watching videos and stuff. And and then uh, uh, she said, or I said, well, one of us said, uh, you know, I haven't, haven't, uh, haven't checked on Paley in a while. Uh, so we actually got up and, and she just screams, right? Mm. Um, his oxygen was at zero. His heart rate was at zero. He was, he was, he was as white as your shirt, right? Oh, wow. Someone had turned the alarm down, the oh, volume, wow. right? Because you have different nurses and so on in there oh, yeah, and they yeah. can adjust the settings and so on. If they yeah. don't like, you know, the, the loud alarm, they can turn it down yeah, so it yeah. doesn't bother them so much. Someone turned it down without turning it up. So we didn't even hear the alarm going off. Oh, man. And so she just immediately goes into, uh, she starts doing CPR and stuff like yeah. this, and she's blowing oxygen in his mouth and, um, and giving him CPR. She's performing CPR yeah. on, you know, uh, you know, little, little <laughs> kid. Yeah. You know. yeah. And so, so she's doing CPR. I call 911 yeah. and, uh, you know, she's in there sobbing and I'm going, look, cry later, cry later. Just, yeah. just get this, do the CPR and stuff. Right, right. Send our oldest two kids down say, kids run downstairs, hold the door open, flag the ambulance down when the kid's here to point them in the right direction and stuff. Yeah. And, um, uh, while that's happening, she's in there doing CPR and she starts getting his, his, uh, his oxygen back up and his heart rate starts starting back up. Okay. But at that point, you know, we, we had no idea if it yeah. was like that for, for yeah. 10 minutes or for, for 30 seconds. Right. 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 Um, you don't know. And so you don't know. Yeah. He's you know, getting heart rate back. because he's brain dead? What, what's the situation? Right, right. And uh, I sort of walked into the next room and stuff once she starts getting him stabilized and stuff, like uh -huh. right before the, the, the paramedics are coming in. And, uh, and, and I prayed there. And um, uh, I said, God, if, you know, if, if Paley has to die at some point, just please don't let it be in a way where she's going to blame herself for the rest of her life. Right, right, she, right. You know, She's the one who took him off the oxygen, so right, she would right. be blaming herself. Right, right, for, right. And it, it, she would be blaming herself for the rest of her life for, right. for, for, for the death of her son. So right. um, I was praying, and I said, right. I said, God, if, if, if Paley has to die, please don't let it be her fault. Let it be in a right. situation where it's my fault. Right, right, right. Because right. I can take it. Right, right, right. I can right. take it. She, you know, she'll be messed up for the rest right. of her life. Right, right, right. Um, so the, I was praying there, but I got choked up when I was doing that. And so that was like the second time. That was right. like the second time. Notice it was both while praying. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave yeah. me, leave me alone by myself, and I, yeah. I just have no, no reaction to anything. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, still several years later, um, I Nabil died, and Nabil died. Um, I was alone. I just, I got a call because uh, his, his, his parents were there with him in the hospital, and they sent out the word, and then I got, I got the word, and so on. Um, and. I got the call that Nabil just died and same thing. No, no, no reaction. It was just, uh, all right, let me send out a message here. And, uh, while typing the tweet, I got a little, like, it was a little, <sighs> yeah. Right. And so I started thinking right there. Why is it like only when I'm communicating, right? Yeah. Yeah. Leaving me on my own, there's no reaction, but yeah, yeah. it's only, I was praying to God. The first couple react, the first yeah. couple times I had an emotional reaction, I'm talking to God. Right. Now I'm sending out a tweet. Right. And it's never while I'm while I'm by myself. Right. It's always it's like communicating somehow. Um, and then and then of course, uh, but but still, it was just you know it, it, nothing big. And then it was uh, I went to his funeral, and right. his parents haven't liked me over over the years, right? Because they right. they viewed me as like leading their son astray. Right. Right. Of course. Right. And like the, more than that, like I, yeah. I somehow brainwashed him and so on. Because a Muslim can never accept the idea that someone actually looked at the evidence and left Islam. Right. 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 It's always got to be something else. It's right. got to be for. You know, Muslims online will say he left it for money. He was paid by Jews right. and things like that. His right. parents know that's not true. So right, they have right. to attribute it to something else. So it's right. got to be, you know, my amazing persuasive powers or right. something like that. Right. Um, my amazing ability to brainwash people who are geniuses like Nabil, right? right? right. Um, so anyway, so, but that, but I, I've never been nice to them. I've never been sympathetic towards them. Right, right, right. right. Um, it's always, what are you whining about, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Son converted, stop whining, right? That, that's right. my, that's like my mental attitude. I'm not saying that to them, but I mean, yeah. even our communications, I'm just never, never nice towards them, really. Right, right. Um, and, 
uh, so I'm at the funeral, and they have the time where everyone's going to, to greet Nabil's family and, and his wife and, and her parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm wondering if I should go up because I know they're not. I know they don't like me, right? right and right. do they? You know, now their son is dead, and he died as a Christian. Right. Do you know? Should I go over and say hi to them, knowing right. that I, you know I've not been you know not been loving towards them over right. the years and so on, and they haven't liked me. Right. Um, and I decide, you know, I you know I, I should. And and when I got over to them. Um, my wife went in front of them. They've always loved my wife. Right. Um, my wife went before me and, and Nabil's dad sort of, you, you can see this in video, he sort of turns a little bit away from me uh -huh. and stuff. And so I just sort of, you know, stand there yeah. until he kind of turns back and, yeah. and, uh, I, uh, I apologized. I Good. said, uh, I said, please forgive me for not being more loving to, to you and to your family, cool. um, over the, over these years. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I broke down in tears. Oh, wow. And that was, uh, oh, wow. And like, like. Tears, yeah. tears. And yeah, yeah. so that was like, to and then yeah. I, you know, went from his dad to Nabil's mom to his sister. Yeah. Same thing. I walked probably eight feet and then just boom, blank, all went away. Oh, wow. Like n nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah. totally blank after yeah, yeah. that. And so I, I don't, I, I, I'm not a master of how the brain works on areas like this, but right. I, I'm almost wondering if the area that's related to communication yeah. is also r related to emotion. And yeah. it's an area that's, that's only active with me if I'm happen to be communicating with yeah. people because I've never had any sort of emotional reaction or feeling bad about for other people or right, right. Uh, feeling any sort of empathy yeah. while it's me just sitting on a, a couch or by myself. It's only right. the only experiences I've ever had of that have been while talking either to God or, or to, to, to another person. That's, um, so I don't know how that works, but you yeah. know, people have, there's an entire history yeah. of me ever having an emotional reaction towards right. something bad. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In three minutes. <laughs> Crazy. No, that, that's super interesting, okay.